Hey guys, Cliff Perch here today and we're talking on BassResource.com about drop shotting in the winter time. So uh, drop shot really works year round. There's different applications year round. In the winter time, uh, you've got fish that are just a little bit more lethargic. And so it's a good technique to put the bait in the strike zone wherever they're at and uh, give them some time to bite it. Uh, when this thing first came out, uh, I had a little area uh, where I was fishing in the wintertime in some local tournaments and uh, it was hard to catch those fish. You couldn't get them to react to much and when this thing came out, you pitch it out there, drop it into those deep, deep rocks and shake it for a while. They finally just couldn't take it and they grab it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, an, easy, it's an easy meal for them, looks vulnerable and uh, so it's a great technique for that wintertime bite. Um, I know lots of folks are familiar with a drop shot rig, but just to give you some specifics, uh, what it is is I'm taking and suspending a bait up off the bottom. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a weight that anchors it to the bottom, and uh, my bait ends up being just up off and to where it just kind of keeps it in that strike zone. Um, wintertime fish, they're not typically going to move far to get your bait. You know, their, their metabolism is slower. And uh, so you want to target those specific spots where the fish are at and uh, give them a good chance to bite it. Uh, they may not, you know, run out and move too far to get it. So a drop shot works really well for that. I don't have to do a whole bunch to impart action. Uh, I might just give it a little bit of a shake, keep some movement on there to get their attention. But in general, I don't have to drag it down the point or, or you know, wind it like a crankbait or spinnerbait or anything like that. So it's going to be a good technique to really put it, in, put it in their face and keep it there. And uh, a lot of times they won't bite it right away. You know, It depends on where you're at in the country. And wintertime means different things in different parts of the country. I'm from the southwest, Arizona. We can fish year round and uh, we've got really pretty good wintertime fishing. There might only be like uh, two weeks where they don't really bite much you know around Christmas or and, and they may bite all through the winter some years so um, we've got a pretty good winter fishing season and uh, this is just a great way for us to fish down there and, and it's it's good for lots of parts of the country uh, when the fish slow down a little bit but where we live I'm gonna be targeting some um, offshore rocky breaks deep points deep ledges things like that uh, maybe bluff walls, you know, a lot of times they will get on that vertical stuff because uh, it, it, they don't have to swim far to change depths if the water level changes. Uh, there's not a lot of, you know, they don't, they don't travel a lot. And so, uh, you know, if it's a nice sunny day, they might come get up a little bit further off of it or they might, they might get down to the base of those rocks for a little bit more, more of that dark, you know, cover, comfortable cover for them. So bluff walls are a great place to target uh, with a drop shot as well. And I'm not, I'm not fishing it all the way down the wall a lot of the times. I might find a crack in the wall where there's some, where there's some rocks have fallen off and created a little ledge on the wall. And that usually holds fish, especially in the winter. So, uh, you know, I might pitch it at a wall or a crack in the wall until it falls and hits a ledge, fish it at that ledge uh, until I get a bite. And, uh, you know, you'll, You'll, when you get the evidence, you'll kind of figure out what, what uh, depths to target, what areas seem to be working best. But again, it's a great wintertime technique. Um, I'm just suspending that bait down in the strike zone. Uh, I still like to use my little uh, straight tail worm most of the time. Some guys like to use a craw or a creature bait or a stick bait. But in general, I really love sticking with just the straight tail worm. Uh, coming from out west, we always fish little soft hand pours, uh, a lot of natural colors, and a real subtle straight tail worm. This is a new one from Big Bite Bait, so we're excited about. We've been working it on, working on it over the last year. Uh, it's it's a new signature worm of mine called the Cliffhanger, and they're making it with the new Sensation Soft Plastic. And what that is, it's just a really really heavy scented bait. So. Not only do I get the real softness, it's really, really soft. You can see it just basically falls off. And uh, it's a soft bait to where you can use that little light wire hook and make sure you know, you know that they're going to get the hook when you set the bait, uh, set the hook. Um, and it's, it's very buoyant. And I get to add that scent to it. So 
it, it draws those fish in sometimes, um, especially if you're fishing a spot, you know, slowly in, in the winter time. Smallmouth especially, they're really drawn to scented plastics or scented baits, so it really helps with a smallmouth bite, uh, but, it, but it, it also does well with spotted bass and largemouth. So, new uh, cliffhanger worm from Big Bite Baits, something I like using. Uh, you've got to experiment with colors. Um, a lot of times I go with the natural greens and, and, and the real natural colors, the green pumpkins and watermelons. Um, there's, a, there's a really cool one here called Natural Magic that they've got. Uh, it's just a, kind of a light, clear green worm and it's got a little blue shimmer on the bottom half of it. So it's, it's a real nice natural looking color. Um, that's a good one. But you also kind of need to let the fish tell you what's working best. You know, you got a couple guys fishing in the boat. You know, one guy maybe has a uh, a green pumpkin, one guy has a pink worm, and another one might have uh, purple or something. So, you know, you've got to see what, what seems to be working best. And again, you know, one day if it's bright and sunny, one color might work well. Another day if it's dark and cloudy, you might need to go with a darker color, with a black, with a purple, you know, and, and, and they've got a real nice black cliffhanger uh, worm. So, um, you've got to experiment with those colors to see what kind of evidence they give you. Um, the new electronic age, you can really see what's down there. So watch, watch those depths where you start seeing uh, what looks like bass hanging on the bottom, hanging on a wall. Uh, look for those areas to target. That gives, you, that gives you a lot of confidence. When you cast there, you can see your bait go into the strike zone. Uh, really helps you cut down on, on wasted time. You know that you're putting your bait in the strike zone. So that's another good thing about that drop shot in the wintertime. Uh, you know that you're getting right into their face. It's a good vertical technique, you know, dropping straight down on your sonar when you see them. But again, with the new stuff that you can see out there with, you can also cast to targets and see where specific fish are at. So it's something I really like to use in the winter. Uh, clarity wise, we've got a lot of clear water out west. You may not. You may be fishing shallower, dirtier water. You could get away with a little heavier line, maybe a medium wire hook. Uh, a lot of places where we're at, I'm, I'm fishing it on light line. I've got like eight pound fluorocarbon. Uh, I've got a light wire gamakatsu one aught light wire hook on here. Uh, this is a Phoenix uh, medium action or medium light action drop shot rod. Uh, I like the 7.6. Some guys might like 6.9, 7.2, things like that. Just depends. I, I like the longer rod because when I can when I get a bite, if there's any bow or any current in my line, I can move more line that way, you know. But you want to make sure it's a soft rod. You know, you're talking about light line. You don't want to really crack them and, and have the potential to break your, break your line. So it needs to be a soft rod. Uh, your hook set is basically a reel into them and bow up. You don't need to, you know, take two steps back and clobber them. It's, it's reel into them as it tightens up and bow up on them. You know, make sure you've, you've got good pressure in there and keep that rod bowed while you're fighting them. And uh, light line, make sure that drag, make sure that drag is loose. You get a big one on, he might start coming to the boat and kind of trick you a little bit and you think, well, I got him. You know, he sees the boat or kind of figures out he's hooked. Uh, might make a hard run. So you always want to be checking that drag. Make sure that when it pulls, it can come off the rod without breaking the rod. You know, if he makes a surge, you know, that light line, it's more important to really know where your drag's at on that. Uh, when I set the hook, a lot of times I want that drag tightened down just enough to barely hear that, barely hear that, gra that drag squeal just a tiny bit at the end of your hook set. And that's, that's usually a good balance to, to manage your, your drag at that level. So those are some tips for drop shotting in the winter. Uh, good way to get bites. Good way to catch big fish if you find an area that's just holding big fish, you can target them. But uh, fun way to fish, and again, you can have some great action. Uh, you may not have the fish, 50 fish days that you might have in the summer, in the fall, in the spring, uh, but you know, you might have some real good action. You might catch 12 fish, you might catch 17. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great way to uh, just get those bites when conditions are a little bit tougher, they're not feeding a lot. Um, this is a really good way to get them. So uh, again, it's something I use year round, but the winter time, uh, it does excel because you're putting it in the strike zone. They're not willing to travel too far to get it. Uh, so it's a great technique to get them. So 
I hope that works well for you. I hope you're able to fish in the winter, like some places. We're uh, here on the Mississippi River today. It's frozen out here, so you're probably drilling holes and, and uh, fishing a little differently out here. But where I'm from in the southwest, we fish in the winter, and, and a lot of these folks migrate down there to fish with us. So uh, that's a technique that'll work for you, and uh, I hope you get them this winter.